I think what a lot of people miss about the issue of woke capitalism is that it's actually just a two-way crony relationship, often between government and the private sector itself. Yes, there's a component to it that involves a bottom-up cultural phenomenon, and I've talked about that separately, but it's worth understanding just it being a vestige of old-school crony capitalism or cronyism itself. Let's take what happened in the SVB case, okay? Silicon Valley Bank did not itself get bailed out. Fine, that's a technicality that elides the essence of what did happen. A bunch of startups who banked at Silicon Valley Bank did get bailed out. They made disastrous financial decisions, the likes of Roku, staggeringly putting $400 million in Silicon Valley Bank. They ended up getting bailed out at the end of the day, but a big part of the virtue signal sent by many of these Silicon Valley firms including Silicon Valley Bank itself, which made a $5 billion commitment just last year to so-called sustainable finance to ensure a healthier planet. What about a healthier balance sheet? That culture in Silicon Valley ultimately paid off in their hour of need. That's part of what subsidizes the phenomenon of woke capitalism. The government came to their rescue in a way that I could basically be certain that they would not have if this had been, say, a mid-sized bank for oil and gas firms in the middle of Oklahoma. Biden and the administration no doubt would have said that's irresponsible, reflects excess profits in the oil industry, and we need to crack down on those profits. We're not going to bail them out. You heard a very different story when it came to Silicon Valley. I think you see the same thing in the other relationship where government also uses its direct power to create the very conditions for that so-called woke behavior in the private sector. This is changing topics a little bit, but goes to my own perspective that we need to end affirmative action in this country by actually ending it in the federal government itself. Now, why does, what does this have to do with the private sector? Turns out that Lyndon Johnson set into motion an executive order, 11246 in this country, that required any company that did business directly with the federal government to abide by race-based, effectively, quota systems, affirmative action programs that cover not some tiny swath of the economy. You think government contractors, you think that's a small number of firms. Now, it's companies that actually employ 20% of the U.S. workforce today. So this is just a pattern that repeats itself where it's not just a marriage of culture and big business. Often, it's just the invisible fist of government getting companies to behave, either directly or indirectly, in ways that companies otherwise wouldn't have behaved. And then we all celebrate this as the invisible hand of the free market that gives us woke capitalism. Don't buy into that. It's the invisible fist of government, whether it's the federal government, whether it's CalPERS effectively forcing asset managers to adopt ESG criteria that then filter down into public companies, whatever it is, look for the lurking action of the government itself, federal governments and state governments alike. And I think that explains a good portion of woke capitalism much more simply than even and much more parsimoniously than having to take a magnifying lens to the culture. Yes, that's part of the story, but government is probably a bigger part of the story than most people appreciate. And that's why I think we need leaders in the private sector and public sector alike who are awake, if you will, not woke, but awake to that reality so they can actually do something about it.